The infant mortality rates in some parts of Amarillo are concerning. The doctors at the Infant Risk Center at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center are working to educate parents on facts and safety precautions surrounding sudden unexpected infant death, sudden infant death syndrome, baby back to sleep, and co-sleeping. Two of those doctors, Dr. Baker and Dr. Perot, join us today with more. So I guess we need sort of definitions on those four different topics first, Dr. Perot, right? Yeah. So sudden unexplained infant death is kind of like the gamut diagnosis mm -hmm. where you don't have any explanation for what the cause of the death is. And it typically happens like in the first year of life. Um, and sudden infant death syndrome is like one part of sudden unexplained infant death. Got so it. there are many reasons for sudden unexplained infant death, but one of them is sudden infant death syndrome. And, and those are that's something that's preventable, right, obviously? Uh, maybe not 100%, mm -hmm. but the rates can be decreased by proper teaching and proper techniques of safe sleeping and so many other things um, so, uh, like associated with sleeping. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about some of those things that we can kind of work to educate parents about. So this is an example of what not to do. Okay, so let's kind of tilt this up, I guess, mm -hmm. so we can show everybody. So can you see the baby and the stuffed animal and the, the covers all around? You do not want this because you don't want anything that could obstruct the baby's airway. So Dr. Pratt and I um, just brought these as examples so that you can see what we want in the, in the baby back to sleep is any, any bassinet, don't drop the baby, <laughs> but in any bassinet, you want the clear bassinet with nothing around, nothing where the baby's airway is, and the baby on their back. Okay, now this to me, I don't have a baby, but if I'm putting a baby down in something like, I feel like, oh, it's so cold and not happy and, uh, right? Am I, yes, being, yes. am I saying and something silly? And, and that has been the norm for many years. Our grandparents said, saddle the baby, put in blankets, you know, even for, like now we give a lot of blankets for babies. Mm -hmm. But the babies, if you pro, um, keep them in a good temperature and put them in one sleeper, they're very comfortable in that temperature. You don't have to like actually layer them with multiple layers. So say you are comfortable in one layer of clothing, uh -huh. the baby might need maybe one additional layer of that same kind of clothing. So maybe a onesie and a sleeper with nothing loose around it or sometimes swaddlers you could use like with attached blankets to put in the uh, crib. Okay, so that's, and you want baby to sleep on your back. Now what about co-sleeping? I've That mm -hmm. has is sort of a big trend mm -hmm. right now. It's a, people are doing it, people are not doing it. Lots of talk about it. So this has always been very controversial, mm -hmm. but the American Academy of Pediatrics has now come out very strong and said the, it's safest if the baby sleeps in the room with the parents for the first year. So in a separate bed is great, but if you're nursing, for a nursing mom that's exclusively breastfeeding every two to three hours for months on end, it can be just exhausting. Uh -huh. And so oftentimes those babies end up falling asleep in the, in the parent's bed. But now the American Academy of Pediatrics has said that it's safe to co-sleep given some conditions. Okay. No drugs or alcohol or sleeping medicine for either anybody that's in the bed. So if there's a partner in the bed, if the mother has been using any kind of sleep aids or drugs or alcohol, that's a dangerous situation. We need the baby out of the bed. And then I brought some examples yeah. of some really creative ways. Um, in Finland, there was an infant mortality issue and they created a box. The box, I've yes. heard about this box. And yes. we've got the photos. This is so, every yes. baby gets one of these boxes, right? right? right. Okay. And they, they put the box in the bed with the mom, but and when she's done nursing, she just places the baby on the back in the box. So it's, she doesn't have to go anywhere or do anything. And just this decreased infant mortality in Finland significantly. That's crazy. We've got, an, and so this is another photo of the box. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing I think is a genius sort of construction to help with co-sleeping as well. Or yeah, this is, this is called a co-sleeper, so there's a zillion different iterations of this, but it's an attachment to the parent's bed that's outside of their bed, but again, the same parameters, um, you know, you want to clear the area, no, no um, soft bedding ar around the area um, where the baby could roll over and, and get suffocated, and then the baby's right there, you can get to nurse, gets the benefit of the nursing, but somebody gets to sleep. I think this is so, such interesting stuff, guys. Thank you so much for sharing. Mommy Meds, let's talk about that app really quickly, though, too. Yes, um, thank you for all of you who donated to our campaign last uh, month. We've met our goal, and we're going to push out education. We're going to give uh, 800 of the Mommy Meds apps out in our area, and we're going to push out educational module, modules on a monthly basis about simple things like this, baby back to sleep, nutrition, tobacco smoking, all the things that we think could possibly help. So thank you very much. Easy, but... 
really, really important fixes. Yep. Doctors, thank you so much for coming. We thank always love to talk to you. All right, stick around, everybody. Coming up after the break, what are the best and worst trees for the panhandle? We're going to ask the tree geek when we come back. Don't go anywhere.